tournament than Catherine Plouffe, and she is their toughness. She is the player whose work ethic never fails Terry Mitchell's team, and she will be looked to quite often in execution situations, but she will also have to handle the ball against DePaul's pressure. Well, she will be surrounded by a cast of great supporting characters in Brooklyn Pumroy, Katie Young, Christina Bajika, and Epi Ojulu, and for DePaul, it's Shanice Jenkins, Brittany Rico, Rogowski, who was just a lightning rod from three-point land, Podkoa, and Vinny. And Terry Mitchell, the head coach for Marquette Golden Eagles in her 18th season there. 10-20 win seasons this year, no exception. All-time basketball wins leader. And for Doug Bruno and this DePaul Blue Demons team, first ever Big East regular season championship. Our officials for this afternoon is Kathy Lynch, Joe Fazilli, and Fatou Sisiko Stevens. For Coach Bruno, he is the Big East Coach of the Year. Great honor for him and what a wonderful season they have had. When these two teams have met, pretty tough on the season. It's been DePaul who's been coming in hot as of late, won 14 of their last 15. And that loss coming against Marquette, Shanice Jenkins looking for her shot early. Can't finish around the rim. This Golden Eagles team coming in off of a last second win against Villanova. 56-53. They lost twice to them in the regular season and then popped back up with a win. And Catherine Group coming up huge in that game, making plays after a difficult first half. And Jenkins from Lincoln Park hits it. So we said we might see some of the home crowd behind the Chicago base team. The ball is going to come with pressure. That is one of the keys for Marquette in this game. They cannot turn the ball over. And jump ball, and luckily for the Golden Eagles, they get the ball right back. And LaChina, the keys for the game for Terry Mitchell and Doug Bruno, what do they have to do? Well, for Marquette, they have to limit their turnovers. DePaul is going to come with defensive pressure. Marquette has struggled with turnovers during different phases in the last couple of years. Then they have to contain dribble penetration because DePaul can draw defenders and they're very good making decisions. And for DePaul, they must win the boards. Marquette is dominant and rebounding, one of the best in the country. And then DePaul's got to be disciplined defensively. They cannot afford to get in a lot of hefty foul trouble because that changes what they can do on defense. Katie Young, you talk about those boards and the area in which they really seem to shine is on the offensive end. And you see here, Doug Bruno is not happy right away with Jazz Penny because that foul not only is costly, but it's in a situation where they should have been able to get a rebound and go the other way. Well, Catherine proved very comfortable at the free throw line, knocks down the first of two. Rebounds have been a factor in the early meetings between this team and DePaul can't get a clean rebound, but then you don't go and foul after that contest, understanding how important Jasmine Penny is to the Blue Demons. Shooting 57% from the field, best in the Big East and among the top 10 in the country. So a quick team foul picked up by the Golden Eagles, and a great dish over to Penny. And that's why one of our keys is dribble penetration. If you let DePaul get a piece of the paint, they're very good at making decisions once they get there. Katie Young, Young going in strong with the left hand. Boy, isn't Young having a fantastic senior campaign. Rogowski who is known for shooting the long range shot, putting it on the floor. Christina Bajika already going to the bench with two fouls. Yeah, there's already foul trouble and changes that have to be made. And once you start to pick up fouls because you can't contain dribble penetration, 
You change the way you're defending screens, and you have to back off, and that's not in your favor against the ball. Rico tries to use the glass, too strong. Proof down with it. From Brooklyn, Pumroy. A bounce pass over to Ujulu. So far, we're seeing a, a tight ball game being called by these officials. Yes, fouls are being called, so you have to start to adjust your mindset. In that last play, there was defensive pressure in the backcourt by DePaul, and I like Brooklyn Pumroy's decision to attack, and that's what we talked about today with Terry Mitchell is that if DePaul's going to bring that pressure, make them pay once you get out. Don't get out of it and try to set up. You've got numbers at that point because you just left two defenders behind you. And Pumroy, the sophomore guard out of Fairburn, Ohio. That's the task of guarding Brittany Rinko. Lugowski tried to squeeze that one in there. No good turnover by the Blue Demons. Katie Young coming back the other way. Strong to the basket and one. That's a favorable matchup for Katie Young. I think she's got to look to be aggressive because with her size and her strength at 5'11", not very many players can handle her off the bounce when she makes a decision to get to the rack. And Megan Rogowski is called with the foul. And an offensive board by Bluth. An 8-0 run now by the Golden Eagles. Rinko launches it. Three. Got it. She's so cold. She'll look right in your eyes and launch it from two or three steps behind the three-point line. Yesterday, she had the uh, corn rolls going back down her head. Today, it's the big ponytail. That's her signature look. Ooh, so strong around the bucket. You know, Catherine Booth is being talked about amongst WNBA teams at this time of year. How about ice cold Shanice Jenkins? The Whitney Young product. So we saw DePaul really looking to penetrate off the dribble early. That's what's opening up the outside shot now because DePaul is, excuse me, Marquette is shrinking their defense to contain the drive and it's opening up outside. And a little too aggressive by Rinko. She picks up the personal foul. Her second personal for Rinko. If you don't get all the way out on Brittany Rinko, she will launch it. And then this is just a nice jumper here by Shanice Jenkins. Again, because they've been on attack to the rim. Rather, the foul was called on Jasmine Kinney. And that one goes against Rinko. So it too is a foul collected by Rinko, her first. Santos, the freshman guard for Terry Mitchell, has played some valuable minutes. One of the big reasons why they've been better down the stretch is because of her development. Who's watching it from long range? Won't go. Centrice McGee coming back the other way. Bounce pass over to Potkoa. Throws it up. And she'll go to the line. 4 2. It's a fast and furious pace here at Allstate Arena. Marquette up by two. Has since Catherine Plouffe stepped on campus. So Brittany Rinko is getting some attention on the sideline. It appears she may have maybe a cut on her finger. And it also may have bled over, bled over to her uniform. She's on the bench and she has two fouls. Yeah, they made a change on a foul from Jasmine Penny to Brittany Rinko. And that 
gave Ringo two fouls, so she is probably going to be sitting for a little while here. And that could play a huge factor here in this first half as she helps to make this team go. The Golden Eagles 4-4 four four from inside the three-point line, but anything beyond that 20 feet and 9 inches, they're over. And Chelsea Butler with the miss as the shot clock was winding down, a contested shot. Jenkins, who has the opp to opportunity to run the point here, no stranger to it, rolls it in. So the ball takes the lead, 13-12. Nice cut, Butler to Santos, who finishes it off. Pressure release, Denise Jenkins denying on the perimeter. Santos made her pay. Pacoa falling to the floor. And our Alicia Morse coming back. Wild shot in January, fighting for the rebound. That was a rebound with authority. We always talk about how athletic January is. And she was an outstanding track and field athlete in high school. She's had some serious hops. She was selected to the all freshman team for the conference. And the freshman out of Richfield, Minnesota has a very bright future with Doug Bruno. Jenkins leading the way on the offensive end for the Blue Demons with seven points. It's a game high at this point. Rogowski, count it. And this is where Megan Rogowski has grown in her offensive repertoire. Three-point shooting, but when you come out hard on her, or you look to take away the three, she is going to drive, and she can finish better at the rim, better than she has in her career. So Santos picks up her second personal, and for Rogowski, who is... A hometown girl not too far from here out of Prospect Heights, Illinois. Has 215 family members and friends here to watch her play in this semifinal game against Marquette. Some pressure or problems getting it across half court. And Johnny on the spot is Jenkins. January launches it. The three is no good. And the one two you see out of January in this Blue Demons team you got to tip your hat to it. She's very physical. And when Centrice McGee and Jessica January come in off of the bench, this team gets faster, it gets more athletic, and the defense is more aggressive. So we're having to see a lot of substitutions as several players on both sides are struggling with foul trouble already. Rinko with two, Penny with two as well. And Santos is on the bench for the Golden Eagles with two along with Bujica. Rogowski, the contested three is no good. One thing Doug Bruno told us before the game was when Marquette beat DePaul in the regular season, DePaul launched 35 three-pointers. That was about half of the shots they took. He said, we want one-third of our shots to be threes. We just took too many. Got to be more disciplined with their shot selection. It's Young. Young. Short on the shot. So we've seen just more than about six and a half minutes pass by. 11 field goals from the floor, but also 11 fouls as well between both teams. And you notice this trend around this time of the year that teams that are familiar with each other, they get in this gridlock on offense where it's hard for either one to score. I mean, points were flowing to begin. But then it just becomes a balance about the 50-50 balls and the rebounds. It becomes about the little things, not just who's scoring. And also who gets into foul trouble. With Rico not on the floor, they'll have to go to Penny Moore down low, and that's the idea 
in that last possession. And Jasmine Penny is not afraid to take it at a post player that is bigger, longer, taller, stronger than she is. And that spin move is patent for her on the inside. And Epi Ojulu has got to keep her hands up. She started to come down and get out of that vertical plane, and that's where the foul's called. So it appears that Rinko has that cut covered up by a Band-Aid, but she may still sit there as, again, we mentioned she has two fouls. Luke coming off a double-double performance against Nova, 14 points, 13 rebounds. Pomeroy, saw an opening, trying to use the glass. Penny coming down with the board. And in transition is where Terry Mitchell was wanting to make sure her team got back on defense. How hard is Jessica January playing right now? She has changed the complexion of this game off the bench. It's been Jessica January lifting the DePaul Blue Demons as they are on a 7-0 run. How about the freshman making an impact? Get hot. If she can score, she just tends to be that facilitator and that calming force, but she's been aggressive so far in this game. And that's what makes this Blue Demons team so tough. Top to bottom, they can beat you in any way. Any given night, any one of those players can have a takeover type game. Look at this matchup here with Jasmine Penny defending Catherine Kluge. That's going to be one fun to watch. All right, so now we're getting into a lot of foul calls. And was that one a little ticky tack there? Well, Appy Ojulu has very long arms, and I don't think it was anything that she really was intending to do, but got in the way in some screeny actions. But that's that's the benefit of being able to draw a post player out and making them guard and, and be involved in those situations. Penny, the cut to the basket high off the board. The luxury for both of these teams is that they do have depth on their bench. And so they're having to go to it early and often here, not even midway through this first half. But that's something you want to see if you're going to have a run, possibly, not only at a Big East championship, but beyond in the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. I mean, this is the time. As you see Brittany Rinko, she's built for Mark. That was halfway down. Pop right back up. Marquette started this ball game. Four of six from the floor. They've only hit one shot in their last six attempts. Good isolation inside for Captain Clues, but good defense by Jasmine Penny. And just a miscommunication. Rinko moving too fast. And Clues will take a seat. And a quick breather. This is a big game for Marquette, considering that, you know, this is the first time the Golden Eagles have advanced to the semifinals since the 2007 season. This has been a very successful run towards the end of Big East for Marquette. They've come together as a unit, as a team. Terry Mitchell tried some different things with her team during timeout and in-game situations, and it's paid off. She said they have a, they had a 27-day countdown to this tournament, and everyone committed to doing the little things. And it's Centrice McGee who has done the little things all season long, the assist by Rinko, but McGee, the transfer in from the University of Illinois. Just talking to Coach Doug Bruno about her and how she has found her role on this team. So timeout on the floor, and DePaul has a 10-point lead. They have continued to just put up points going on an 11-0 run. Brittany Rico here with a show and go. And if you move while Brittany Rico has the basketball, she'll find a lot of pressure on Brittany Rico coming in. 
Add to that the fact that she's the preseason player of the year. So she's finally started to settle in, and she's a big reason why DePaul was regular season champs. The first ever. In the Big East, fifth overall in the conference titles. Catherine Proof finally into drought. Jenkins once more, no good. McGee down with it. And Kelsey Reynolds, the Boston College transfer, who's also given valuable minutes to this group this season. Zone defense here by Marquette. Podkoa, who's known to hit the boards, can also put up the points. And another foul inside. It's McGee who's called for the personal. And that's not really where Megan Podkoa is most comfortable. She was trying to make a move in the post. And she's become a more physical player, but she has more of the mindset of a guard. So she went away from the basket on that move instead of powering it up and inviting the contact. So a lot of substitutions in and out for both ball clubs. Nine minutes remaining in the first half, 24-16 alongside the China Robinson. I'm Tiffany Green. 23rd ranked DePaul. Looking to punch their ticket to the championship game. Marquette standing in their way. Red hot team coming into this tournament. Katie Young across the way. Brigica, her first two. Great execution versus pressure. The ball brought the trap and the ball movement was perfect. Again, moving without the basketball. The ball has had nine field goals from six different players, so it speaks to the balance of this club. Jenkins once more. The She's decided that it's going to be her night. Shanice Jenkins. Ten points for the sophomore. The local product from Chicago, right here, Whitney Young High School. And both teams are now in the bonus as it's been Shanice Jenkins with 10 points coming up big. The all new. We mentioned in the open first 21 seasons since the 2010 11 campaign. And that one short, but coming down with the board is Lauren Tibbs. Tibbs can't handle it. Young goes right back up in traffic. And a foul is called on Brandy Harvey Carr. A red shirt freshman forward out of Camden, New Jersey. So we talked about DePaul losing to Marquette. The other factor that Doug Bruno talked about was the rebounding because we're right back there with the offensive boards. In that win for Marquette, they out rebounded DePaul 53 to 35. That is a sizable margin with Marquette again being one of the best defensive teams in the country. And a point of emphasis, and as you've already mentioned, an identity of this Golden Eagles team. Zone defense again for Marquette. That helps them to contain river penetration, but they've got the zone extended up high so they can also contest three. They work better around the perimeter. Reynolds going for it all. No good. But already DePaul is off to a better shooting start from beyond the arc than they were yesterday as Penny is there on cleanup duty. Nice anticipation. My opinion is I thought Harvey Carr was going to put that right in, but that's what you give up playing zone if your Marquette is some of that defensive 
prowess. Katie Young going in all the way. She'll have two shots at the line. I like Katie Young's decisions in this game so far. We watched her make that pass that got the score out of the trap. Right here, she just looks to be aggressive, not forcing the issue, but really just letting the game come to her. So she has six points in this one. Out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Marquette, not a far trip at all. Just about 70 miles away from the Chicago area. And Coach Doug Bruno made sure to say, you know, this is not a home game for us. Yes, we are in the suburbs of Chicago, right side, outside of, you know, where DePaul is located, but they haven't played here since 2012. Legowski with the steal, and this is the opportunity to convert it into points. That was just a strange possession as they played hot potato with the basketball for a while. And that's what Terry Mitchell's saying, pick it up, grab it. <laughs> basketball is your friend, not hot. I like her coaching style, very practical approach to the game. She's one of the best in the business. And what I love about Terry Mitchell is her character. You know, she does things for the right reasons, the right way. And she's very transparent as well. You know, we were talking to her about her team having success down the stretch at Big East. She said, I had to change some of the things that I do, the way that I execute in the timeout, the way that I communicate with my team to get the best out of them. So she looks at herself first and how she can improve. And then that makes her whole team better. For Golden Eagles, down by 10. Just under six and a half to go in this first stanza. Off the backboard, Brooklyn Plumroy. Nice take. Very smooth. Off the glass. Posting up is Podkoa, Ruth all over. Give and go. Shanice Jenkins is just putting on a clinic in this first half. You know, it makes you appreciate her even more as a player because she could probably do this every night. But she chooses to take a back seat to this plan. And what court vision. Just can't finish it off by Rogowski, but great pass by Rinko. And Blues coming back on the other end saying, you know what, I can dish it out as well. Chelsea Butler Terry Mitchell, now with four. Terry Mitchell saying she trusts Catherine Plouf with the basketball, even though she's a post and guess who it is again? <laughs> oh my, Plouf. Took too many steps before she put the ball on the floor. Shanice Jenkins must have family and friends and everyone from Whitney Young in this crowd because she is putting on a show. Splits the D, throws up the circus shot. 14 points for the sophomore. Six of eight from the floor. And Megan Pacoa is struggling to find her scoring space on the floor in this matchup. Young, corner, three, yes. So she's got 10 points. Coming back the other way, Rakowski tries to answer, can't. Look at McGee go up for it. I'm going to call to intrigues McGee, the Energizer Bunny. Because when she gets in, she's all over the floor. Sometimes I don't even know who she's defending because she's just everywhere. The fourth-year junior guard knows it's all about want-to on the boards. And she is really starting to peak at a time where her team needed 
more depth. And that's been the biggest difference I've seen with this DePaul team over the course of this year is they're getting valuable minutes off of the bench. And she's been a pleasant surprise. She was hurt at Illinois, as you mentioned. She was a transfer, then had to sit out last year. So she's ready to make her mark and making good use of her time every time she gets an opportunity. So Jenkins not only scoring the ball, second on the team in assists, and coming down with the board here. The other thing that Marquette is having to do playing this zone is protect their team from foul trouble because they got quite a few players that are right there at two. Podkoa launches it. Lincoln Park is shouting. But that's what you give up if you got to play zone. Pajika out of Bucharest, Romania. Puts it up just short. And here come the Blue Demons. They've got numbers behind the back. Woo! What a dandy. It was a dime. That was sweet. And DePaul is on a roll. Brzezika comes right back and answers with I, the twofer. I think Brzezika was getting ready to come out of the game until she hit that one. Talk about just the sharp passing of Brittany Rinko. Brittany Rinko said March Madness is here and I'll give you a dime for your time, baby. Who do the expert? She wants to win this in front of her family and friends. Rep your city. Clearly. Not mad at you. Outman bounces in for McGee. And so that free throw ties the largest lead of the game for DePaul at 12. Penny checking back in. Happy O'Julio showing some ball handling skills. Absolutely, but very difficult to get up the floor. The 6'3 junior had the handles, but got caught in the middle. 10 second backcourt. You forget about that. It sneaks up on you. I haven't seen very many calls that's new to women's basketball women's college basketball this season. And they got called. Marquette took too long to bring it up. Eighth turnover for the Golden Eagles. And Jenkins waving her hands in the corner because she, or rather January, really wanted that one. And Morse picks up the personal. That's her third. And Marquette did start to extend that defense a little bit more become aggressive. I think that foul trouble again is a reason why they had went to zone. Well, Wednesday, the birthplace of legends is ready to rock as the Big East Tournament comes to America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1, live from Madison Square Garden. The only place to see the Big East Tournament is on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. But before you can even blink your eyes and think about the men's tournaments, the women's tournament is all the buzz and excitement in this new look Big East and its new home here in Chicago. Katie Young has to touch the ball every time down the floor. Nothing good is happening on offense without it. Harvey Carr forces the issue. Look at Brandy Harvey Carr with a step-through move. Didn't get a perfect pass, didn't catch it clean, but I'm just going to power it up to the rim anyway. And Ashley Santos collects her third personal foul, and Harvey Carr finishes off the three-point play. And Bajika has to be careful as well as she has two personal fouls. And at this point, Marquette is trying to play at the pace of DePaul. This game has already been played 
way faster than Terry Mitchell would have liked because DePaul has 47 points in the first half. And she spoke to us in shoot around just about confidence. That was the biggest challenge coming into today's game just because we had faced a DePaul team before and won big at home 80 to 74. The left hand scoop by Pumroy. Wigowski finds Harvey Carr once more. Couldn't get the lucky drop, but she's going back to the charity strike. She has been essential to the development of this DePaul team for Doug Bruno to be able to put Brandy Harvey Carr in the game for however long, whether it's one, two, or ten minutes, and she give them a size advantage, big body on the interior. She's been effective here in the last couple minutes. 6-4 four forward. When she does get in, tries to make an impact and already has three points. Young coming back. You said she has to touch the ball, and when she does, good things happen. I'm telling you. What a smooth stroke. January. And they're trying to get to Harvey Carr. And Harvey Carr is not ashamed about putting it up. She's getting good quality looks at the basket. And look who's flying in for the rebound. Shanice Jenkins. CJ. You know, we're cool like that now, so we can go on the <laughs> nickname basis. Well, we talked about Jessica January and her rebounding ability. Shanice Jenkins is also an outstanding rebounder, and she's often said that that's how she gets into the flow of a game is when she's rebounding the basketball. The importance of the guards crashing the boards, Jenkins, better than four boards a game. January with just over three. So CJ and JJ, there you go. as I like to call them. <laughs> Marquette is just continuing to dig themselves into foul trouble. Rajika, Santos, and Morris all with three. Butler and Plouffe with two. That changes the complexion of what you can do if you're Terry Mitchell. And her team is going to have to regroup and understand how this game is being called and adjust their defense accordingly. Pumroy once again can't get it to fall. And you talk about the difference about how this ball game is being played. In our first semifinal game between Creighton and St. John's, it was 54-54 at the end of regulation. DePaul already has... 49 points, and we still have a minute 20 to 23 to go in the first half. Scoring the ball. Execution, transition, fast break, up and down. Everyone's going to get into the locker room at halftime and take a deep breath for this, <laughs> this game, the pace. And Terry Mitchell is really trying to plead her case as Doug Bruno's ball club continues to find their way to the free throw line. Eight times they have made it to the charity strike rather there are 15 of 20 from the line and how frustrating is it if you're a player you know you can play with this team but foul trouble really changes your game plan if you're Marquette yeah it really does and you're not able to really slow it down because you don't want to put your hands on the ball handler and you don't want to be physical on screens because you can get called. So it, the pace can get fast quickly if you can't get stops because you're afraid to foul. Katie Young has done a good job of drawing fouls. Her sixth free throw attempt is good. She's made four at the line today. Terry Mitchell's been very happy with Katie Young's leadership this season. She said she's the voice that's been keeping everyone focused and really just decided she was going to have a good season very early. She's been consistent. Off the screen, come on, looking like Del Curry. Remember him, the quick release? Oh, yes. <laughs> Rogowski. Now his son, Steph Curry, doing business in the NBA. How about Jenkins coming up with the steal? Rather, January. JJ. This has just been an onslaught. 
by DePaul, 55 points in the first half. And the bench has really come up big. January, you saw in that last bucket, the Blue Demons have scored 15 points from their bench. Too long by Young. That's the first shot that Young has taken that's been that far off the mark. Defense here leading to offense as Jessica January gets off and running and she has brought an aggressive attitude into this game. Considering the limited minutes for Brittany Rinko because of foul trouble, Jessica January and Shanice Jenkins has been outstanding. Rinko can only look on, but she has to be pleased with the way January has come up for a shot clock violation and not maybe the final possession you want to see if you're Terry Mitchell going into the locker room. So a 30-second timeout on the floor. And Doug Bruno has done a fantastic deal. 12 a game. Just a high-octane offensive system, and it's like fire and ice. It's fire because they will take you right to the rim with their transition game, but they'll ice you with the three-point shot. 18 NCAA tournament appearances from long range. January can't get it to go, but the Blue Demons go into the locker room with a 55-38 lead. 53% from the field. It's been Jessica January who's been lighting it up. She's going into the line. Not to the free throw line, and that has been key because it also got Marquette to foul trouble. And talking about foul trouble, that really kind of slowed them down. Taking a look at the first half stats, both teams shooting very well from the field. Turnovers, a key though, as Marquette has committed 10 turnovers and then the bench points you got to circle that right there 15 points for the DePaul bench but time now for our New York life keep good going stat Shanice Jenkins with 16 points her highest point total in 14 games she has been all over the court between her and Jasmine Penny they have combined for 26 points 9 of 12 from the floor the Chicago product Really showing out early in the first half of this Big East Championship semifinal. Jenkins trying to rein in another three. And already a quick whistle. Megan Fikoa on the rebound. She has struggled to get in the rhythm. And for Terry Mitchell's crew, they've been in a lot of close ball games, but they've also had to come back from large deficits. They'll definitely have to trim away at this 17-point lead by the Blue Demons. But they've got the personnel to be able to do it. Brinko starts the second half. This Marquette team was down 23 points in the first half to St. John's and came back on the road. And there's Blue getting it going. One of the senior captains on this team. We can just call her the captain. <laughs> She's definitely their leader. Pomeroy coming back the other way. As Thompson taking it all the way in. Pinball action. Young can't get it on the putback. Possession arrow in favor of the Golden Eagles. Happy and Katie both had their hands on the ball, but Abby couldn't see who it was behind her, so just to make sure she held on to it, and Katie said, I could have scored a layup there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking she said in her mind. Young, so aggressive. And you said you like just her, her body type and, and size and just how tough she takes the ball up. Yeah, she keeps you off balance, and she can get it going from the outside, too, but her attack and aggressiveness to the rim. Good balance of shots, versatility, can score all over the floor. So two quick fouls in the second period by Megan Potkoa. She now has three. As Young hits one of two. 
You can probably hear a lot of cheers in the background. Great crowd on hand. Very good crowd here for the semifinal game. Jenkins over to Penny. They've been a one-two punch in this ball game. And Penny just gets hers quietly as we heard Katie Smith talking about in studio. Before you know it, she's racked up 20 points. She's just so effective from the field. You know, high quality shots, she takes them. And she's effective. She's so close to the basket, why not? Methodical. Creates angles like this one. High off the glass, got it. So the ball out to their largest lead of 18. Big strides in the post. Look at how spread her legs are. She's got a strong foundation. Staying low, and then she just has a knack for putting it up on the glass. And I think sometimes smaller post players are better finishers because they have to find ways to get it up there over taller defenders. That one is short as Pluth has her third personal. So again, fouls could definitely play a factor here in the remaining minutes. It's Morse. So Alicia Morse. Now Alicia Morse can be a volume score. Let's see if they can get her going. Trying to force it in there. Here comes Katie Young and the Golden Eagles. The crossover, the step back three, just short. Rinko, one on one with Pumroy. Finds Jenkins. Akkoa coming down with the board. And right at the top of the key, the woman who can knock him down is Megan Rogowski. She averages just over three triples a game. Quick shots and bad shots lead to DePaul on the attack. Let's see if Marquette can get a good look here and slow this down some. Already seven points scored in three minutes here for DePaul. Pumroy answers with a trifecta of her own. She has to stay involved in their offense because she must keep the defense honest. That's what's going to allow her to become a passer. Franco finds Penny. Penny said, you're sagging off. I'm going to make you pay. Blue showing off the handles and it looked like she was going in for two. And Jasmine Penny scores on one end, and then her player, Catherine Booth, is charging down in transition, and no one picks up Penny's man. So Potkoa going to the bench with her fourth personal foul and a well-deserved breather for Katie Young. Potkoa, as you mentioned, just hasn't been able to find a groove today. Second chance opportunity. At the half, Marquette was losing the rebound battle, and that is not the norm for them. So they've got to step it up and do what they do best, just like DePaul's doing what they do best. A three-second violation. And what does Terry Mitchell's team have to do to kind of claw their way back. Do we keep going back to blue? Well, as I said, they've got a rebound, first of all. I mean, they're a team that lives on the glass, and that gives them extra possessions to score. But also, yeah, the ball does have to work through Catherine Sloop and definitely Katie Young when she's on the floor. Give Sloop a touchdown there, and that's going to be good for everyone else. Well, Morse, offensive-minded on that drive there. Kelsey Smith seeing her first action of the game. Came to Doug Bruno's club from Michigan State. Homeroy, the runner. Yes. Homeroy is finding some spots where she can be aggressive to score. They got to close this gap. So 
They must score points. And the old cliche may come into play here is defense can lead to offense. Rogowski launches it from the suburbs. She doesn't even see the defense. If you're not already there when she lines it up, you can come running out at the three-point line all you want. Her eyes are on the rim. Butler on the undersized McGee. Moore's coming in hard. She'll go to the charity strike. Talking about Megan Rogowski hitting it from not just long range. She said, I'm in another township right now. Going down. In love for the game. And he was actually sharing with us today that his mom has always believed in practice categories. And what that is is every day there are certain things that you work on no matter what. And that's, example, attacking pressure because we asked him how Marquette has gotten better at not turning over the ball. So he said, you do that every day. You do breakdown drills every day, rebound e drills every day. So he says his mom's old saying is brick by brick is how you lay the foundation and just believing in doing something every day until it's improved. He's laying his coaching foundation here as an assistant on this Golden Eagle staff. Does he have the potential to go on and one day be a head coach considering his bloodline? Oh my goodness. Considering that his basketball IQ, his leadership skills, his character, he's got it all. And the genius. Coach Mitchell is a great coach to learn from. Good friends with Coach Summit. He allows Tyler a lot of responsibility, but also just relies on him a lot and lets him make decisions. Who finds Santos in a traveling violation on the freshman? And you are down 15. Every possession is critical. Marquette's got to put together a run. They have not really responded with a run. They traded baskets back and forth with DePaul, but they have dominated the game for any stretch for quite a while now. And like we mentioned, you know, at the half, both teams shooting better than 50% from the field, and you think to yourself, wow, Marquette's still down by 15. And time winding down on the shot clock, turnover for the Blue Demons. That's good that you can get a defensive stop because that's part of it. You're right. The shooting isn't always the issue. When you're down by a lot, you've got to execute because DePaul can, but if you keep them from scoring, you'll be in good favor. And Pluth with a wide open look, baseline jumper, can't get it to fall. But a foul underneath the basket. And Shanice Jenkins caught with the personal, also having to do a little adjustment with her contacts. So she settled down just a little bit here. Started off that first half on a mission. And Bluth is having a tough time just seeing the ball fall through the hoop. Playing fast. Marquette is just playing fast. Ruth can take that shot and she can hit it. Just rims in and out. So now four turnovers for DePaul in their last five trips. Now you got to maximize, put some points on the board. And coming from behind to pick the pocket of Pluth is January. They want to get it down in the post. It's Brandy Harvey Carr. He's playing opposite block of Jasmine Penny. 
bikinis and no man's land in their offense. I think she's tired. How about it? Megan Rogowski. Rogowski now has 13 points. And she too is putting on a little show in front of uh, the home state crowd. They call her Rogo and right there. She gets some hang time at the rim, finishes over the taller defender at Epi Ojulu. Gets a chance to go to the line. So Rogo with eight points in the last four minutes and 40 seconds. When Rogo is on, these blue demons are hot. And Butler checking in for Ojulu. And Ju Ojulu yeah. goes to the bench with four fouls as well. January, the turnaround. Wild shot there. Better job defensively by Marquette. I mean, the way that this offense was moving for DePaul in the first half, if you can get them to go scoreless in a few possessions, you're good, but then you can't, you gotta capitalize on your end. DePaul known for putting up points in a hurry. Greater than 83 per game this season. That's the best in the Big East. Doug Bruno's team loves high tempo, high octane kind of offense. If you want to try to run with them, give it your best shot. And another call on the ball. Oh, they're going to call that actually on Marquette, it looks like. So Lauren Tibbs commits her first personal foul. The officials have worn out their whistle so far this evening. Rogo. I need something to rhyme with that. Rogo, you know so. Something catchy and clever because she is. These are the kind of momentum plays that Marquette needs. And instead, they're going to Paul's way. Then Rogo, who's been red hot, 17 points for the Blue Demons. Points, and we still have 11.49 to go. Those dazzling demons, as you saw in that graphic, have put up 49 points. Megan Rogowski, Shanice Jenkins, Jasmine Penny, and Rogo with 10 points in the last six minutes. <coughs> I'll tell you, this crowd has been having fun. At halftime, every time the music or something comes on, they are having a good time at All-State Arena. Well, you know, probably like 125th of the crowd are uh, Megan Rogowski's family and friends. 215, and how about one, two, and three for Megan, or rather Catherine Plouffe. They've got to make a move. Marquette coming out of the timeout. They need to push to get a run together here. And one way to do it is coming up with stops, as you mentioned. Oski took a hard fall on that one. But let's see if Marquette can score some points and try to close this gap. Well, you mentioned that they've been down by as many as 23. And they were on their northeast road trip. So Seton Hall and then St. John's. And we're able to come back. They never stop fighting. Terry Mitchell's team worked very hard. For 
for a full an entire game. I've never seen Marquette lose a game because of work ethic. Never. They may turn the ball over or just get out played or they shoot well, but they don't take plays off. Blues not trying to take a play off. Just bounces out. Rinko handed it over to Rogowski. No good. So still plenty of time for Marquette to get back in this one, although DePaul has really found their stride. Came into today's ball game. Big East regular season champs, first ever time. Katie Young's got to get involved again. Pumroy does as well and knocks down the tray. What a second half for Brooklyn Pumroy. I really believe she spends the first half figuring out where she can score, and second half, she's ready to trigger. Talking about pulling the trigger. Rinko is off the mark there. So he spoke of Katie Young getting involved and the things happen when she gets to the goal. There's the run. So the Golden Eagles down by 11, going on an 8-0 run. Katie Young, nice and smooth, the senior finger roll at the rim. She's trying to get back in this. She wants to play for a championship. Because this team has outstanding chemistry. They really like playing together, and they know where they are on the floor. Time now for our direct TV summary. And, well, just 11 points separate these two teams. Just a minute ago, it was a 19-point game. Since then, Marquette's gone on an 8-0 run. And I like the energy from Marquette. They're not quitting. They've got attitude. Brooklyn Pomeroy has taken on a little more of a chip on her shoulder in this second half. And it's made a difference for her team. Along with Pluth and Young, two of the senior captains who have combined for 34 points. Pacoa back out there, top of the key, in and out. And this DePaul team set a school record with 276 three-pointers, so they like to light it up from long range. Bajika has struggled with fouls all afternoon long. Jasmine Kenny. It just is so easy when she is so close to the basket and knows how to finish around the rim. Well, it's the position she gets. She gets low, she opens her stance, she stays on balance, so she had all she has to do is step towards the basket and she can get a layup. She does her work early. Too easy. Back to it once more. Too easy. You let her get deep position, you're in trouble. down there. Todd Coa saw that one. Closed in on the opening. Rinko back the other way. The dish over to Jenkins and she wanted that one to fall. Katie Young won't go. Pluth has got her back. Paying attention to Rinko and Rinko not making them pay there. So Marquette taking their time, setting up their half court offense. Seven to go on the shot clock. Clue the contested three. Hand in there by Pacoa. 
DePaul maintaining control of this game behind the play in the post. Look at Jasmine Kenny establishing herself on the low block. Perfect angle and finish. They've never won a Big East championship, but they have an opportunity to make it to that title game if they can hold on to this lead against Marquette. 7-11 remaining. Lucky numbers. Alongside LaChina Robinson, I'm Tiffany Green. And the offensive firepower we've seen from DePaul all season long, averaging greater than 83 points a game. They have the ability to also get out on the floor and run what they do so well in transition. Megha Rogowski hides in this offense. She doesn't talk a lot. You forget about her. And then she puts you on blast. Rogowski has had 19 points, 12 of them coming in the second half. And I like the way that Doug Bruno has kept a fresh body on Catherine Kluge all night. He has used multiple players to occupy her, whether it was Harvey Carr or Jasmine Penny. Obviously, they've been matched up quite a bit. He has used a full arsenal of players just to compete against her and keep a body on Kluge. She's put up her points. She's gotten 17, but it's been a very difficult 17 to come by. Yeah, it has. It's been very quiet, and she's had to work for it. She's been awesome on the boards, 13 rebounds. Matko wide open. Tipping it right back out. Jenkins to January. No good. Morse. And the Golden Eagles coming back. And almost got that shot to go, just a little short. McGee with her fourth personal. So her and Pot Core both have four. First one rims in for the junior out of Flint, Michigan. And he talked about Morse's ability to be a high volume scorer when necessary. You know, she's teetered with the starting lineup throughout the season. Good enough to be a starter, but also can provide a great spark just depending upon the matchups off the bench. For Terry Mitchell. And it's been a good place for her, and I like the way she has bought into that role. Just allowing the plan of Terry Mitchell for this team to happen because of her unselfishness. Talking about unselfish play. Good things happen when you give up the ball. It's a clinic. I mean, the positioning of the basketball and the bounce pass for DePaul is outstanding. You're going full speed, and the perfect pass that threads the needle by Rogowski. Execution. And what is so interesting about DePaul as Epio Julu fouls out is that DePaul records just about 66%, an assist on 66% of its baskets. And now they have set a program record here today with 16 assists. They only need 11 coming into the ball game. So Morse starting to make some noise. Eight points. For the junior. Go 
Roberto Rogowski again. The quick fire. Conco, Jenkins, down with the board. The other thing that allows your passing and execution to be at a high level, like the Pauls, is their spacing. How well they space and balance the floor. They're not on top of each other. Well, taking their time, and Pluth, with her fourth personal. Jasmine Penny, 9 of 10 from the field, now 6 of 7 from the line. She's registered 24 points. Pomeroy coming up short. Shanice Jenkins, who had 16 points in the first half to lead the way for the Blue Demons, and has been held scoreless here in this second half. She did her work early and helped the team build a lead. We mentioned her name, and she'll get to the free throw line to put up some points here with 422 remaining. Both Shanice Jenkins and Brittany Rinko can play point guard or off guard, but it's a two-headed snake because of the way they both deliver the ball one and two for most of the season in assist. And when you have two players that see the floor well and can get everyone involved, it makes your offense flow that much more effectively. And how scary is it to think that they'll all be coming back, but they will be losing Jasmine Penny and Kelsey Reynolds, along with Kelsey Smith. Boy, Brooklyn Pomeroy. Timeout on the floor. Pomeroy has pulled in 14 points this evening. She has turned it on in the south. Leading the way, it's Jasmine Penny with 24 points. Shanice Jenkins. And Megan Rogowski also adding 18 and 19, respectively. The senior forward out of Logan Sport, Indiana, is so effective from the field. Leads the Big East in field goal percentage with more than 57 percent. We've seen just how effective she's been. Rajika. Taking it back the other way. Pumroy already with 10 points in the second half. How about 12 now? She's been in attack mode, Tiffany. Talk about attacking is Rogo. And the pace has just been too much. And Marquette can run. I mean, they have put up a lot of points at various stints this season. And I don't know, that was a pretty hefty foul there. Alicia Morse did not even make a play for the basketball, and they may go and review this. And they're walking over to the scorer's table. In the course of the season to get better, you know. I mean, it's the Big East has been so tough that the bottom has beat the top, and the top has beat the bottom. And teams have competed, even though DePaul has been consistently there. Obviously, St. John's has been consistent, but when you falter, you learn, you get better. And the Blue Demons have done that. They've thrown up a lot this season. Well, that was a big girl move by Christina Bajica. Six points for the junior. I love the Marquette huddle as Bajica... Freeze of the defense with the ball fake and off balance, finish using the glass. But the huddles for Marquette have so much energy in them. They, they have no idea how much time is left in this game right now. And that's how you have to play if you want to come back. Obviously, there's a sense of urgency, but they are giving every moment all they have. Down by 12, and 
320 and counting. You know, both teams have really shot the ball well from the field. And pulled at 48%. You can't get into a shootout with DePaul. You have got to get stopped because they will out for you. And an opportunity right there as an over-the-back call is on Jasmine Penning. Her second personal foul, and that's not only a way to get a stop, but also stop the clock. Both teams are in the bonus. And Marquette will get two shots from this point forward in the double bonus. Plenty of time left in this game. We saw in the first semifinal between St. John's and Creighton how often both of those teams, especially the Red Storm, got to the free throw line. And that really was a deciding factor in the game. If St. John's hits their free throws, it wouldn't have gone possibly to double overtime. Yeah, scoring is not easy when you have to do it five on five. So you need breaks. And what does that look like? Transition when you have numbers. It also looks like scoring from the free throw line with no defense. Getting points however you can, as easy as you can. Moore's coming up with all 10 points here in the second half. And Shanice Jenkins, Rinko to Jenkins. Wow, give and go. Pomeroy answers on the other end. Rinko. It almost looked like Pomeroy just sagged off her and gave her the path to the lane. And Marquette needed that. They could have cut it to single digits if they had gotten a stop right there in a score. Or you could do it just like that. So Katie Young knocks down the big three. This does something to your mental. When you can see that score down to single digit lead, they have worked their way basket by basket. And Katie Young right here takes it be wrong, but you also have to be playing well and passing the eye test. And this is where you can pick up a big win that can really turn the tides. Absolutely. And there it is, a big stop. Catherine Pluth picks it away. Santos over to Morris. Morris adding to her point total, the long two. And the Golden Eagles within seven. Rinko once again with a clear shot at the basket. And she just walks over calmly to the huddle. No big deal. Well, Doug Bruno is the master. And the way that his offense runs, it was a distraction on the baseline that pulled the help defense out. Watch this. Help defender is now gone with five points between three players. Some teams can't score 65 with their entire team. And that's the first time in a decade that they've been able to do that. They also have put up 90 or more points in 11 games this season. Bluth and Pakoa collects possibly her fifth personal foul with that one. So she will take a seat. And Bluth will have two shots. with one more very high-scoring affair. The 
between these two teams. Marquette coming up successful on the last eight trips down the floor. Jenkins finds Penny all alone. Not enough teams use the bounce pass. When I watch DePaul, it reminds me of how forgotten it is. Pomeroy! Oh, yeah. The three is good, and Terry Mitchell quickly calls a 30-second timeout. Pomeroy, as you said, is really lining it up. 21 points for the sophomore. This is down to a six-point lead. They have come with a refuse-to-lose attitude. 17 points in this half from Brooklyn, Brooklyn Pumroy. A good reason why they're only down by six. And remember, DePaul had a lead as large as 19. So Rinko at the line. For two, her first free throw attempts of the ball game. Sinks that one. And then there's the Energizer Bunny, as you like to call, Centrice McGee. If she's got energy on the defensive end. They may look to put her or January on Pumboy. Because I like both of their defensive energy coming off the bench. Kluth. Over to Santos. Santos. And that's Santos' fifth personal foul after missing... That three-point attempt on the last trip down the floor. And they may be calling that an intentional foul on Santos, and that is the case. As the freshman, Richard Freshman takes a seat. So that will send Jenkins to the line. And the rule that takes that the Blue Demons will also inbound the ball. So with Marquette down by eight, they are employing the foul strategy to slow this game down, stop the clock. Humroy with three. Jenkins with her 23rd point of ball game. She's 7 of 8 from the free throw line. Morris, pump fake. Gets it over to Proof. But you got to put up a shot. That one is no good. And with 10 points separating the two with 27.8 seconds remaining. This one looks to be nearly in the books for DePaul.
So all throughout the season, we talk so much about Brittany Rinko and what she means to this team. A rising star in her junior season. She came in with great expectations, but it's been all about her other players when she takes them to the championship game, but it's been Penny, Rogo, and Jenkins. And that's what often has to happen at this time of the year is everyone has to be ready to step up. Off the front iron. And Brittany Rinko can smile because she knows that she and her Blue Demons will be going to the Big East Championship game. Morris fouls out, and then Doug Bluno elects to clear his bench. But what a run by Marquette. You know, they come in here, and they had already gotten big wins against DePaul, against St. John's, against the teams that they needed to beat during the regular season, came in as a fifth seed, had to erase the memory of Villanova during the regular season. Well, unfortunately, they have had to work themselves back into, into a lot of games, and that takes and requires tremendous energy. And at this level in a championship series, that's a tall hill to climb when you get down big in the first half and having to do it over and over again like they have down the stretch this year to catch up with you. And you're talking about trying to catch up 100 points for DePaul. Third time this season they have hit that mark. And Brittany Rinko will be content to just hold it out, and that's ball game. So the Blue Demons are headed to the Big East Championship game. 100 to 90, and we'll send it back to...